Graph SDK is the glue between the code and the RESTful API. We're going to look into how to use it with Azure.Identity. Hello, and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing? It's been a while, and I haven't updated this channel because I went to Yellowstone for a vacation. But hey, I am back. This video will talking about the SDK investigation part for Codename K. For those new to the channel, Codename K is a project that I'm building and sharing the process with you. It will have a desktop app, a phone app, and a web app to store the numbers. And it will use the OneDrive as a backend storage to exchange data in between those clients. Check out the Blueprint video for more details. And again, I'm working for Microsoft as a senior developer. This channel or this project has nothing to do with my job. However, my tech performance is biased, and I hope you know that. Now let's talk about SDK. Last time, we investigated the Microsoft Graph API together. The focus was on OAuth. We registered an app, invoked the token flow manually, that gave us an access token. And by that, we then listed all the files under the root of the OneDrive by Postman. I'd say it was all good, except that there was no code. So in today's video, we're going to look into how to write code for it. Now, I'm not at the stage of writing the final code, so this is still part of the investigation. Let's assume we will have a C -sharp application on the left hand side called Codename K. And we know we were going to invoke Graph API on the right hand side, which is the addressable API. Logically, I have two choices now. I could use the HTTP client to interact with the Graph API. I could use the Graph API SDK. The SDK is a kind of like a wrapper of the RESTful API. It's provided in common languages like C, Java, so on and so forth. SDK is less cold. It helps reduce burden of dealing with the different technology. The concern is there might be bugs in SDK by itself. If something goes wrong, it could be caused by the RESTful API on the server side. It could also be caused by the SDK that we used. SDK could also be lacking behind the, the server development. Let's see if I can address those concerns by today's investigation. So where do we start? One word, documentation. Well, I don't usually trust documentation, but they do usually provide a good start point. In terms of the uh, Microsoft Graph SDK, there happened to be a user SDK section. For .NET, it lists all the related uh, NuGet packages. Those packages are all backed by open source projects. Most of them looks like they are under active developing, except this uh, Microsoft Graph the auth. It has been deprecated in favor of uh, Azure identity. Deprecation happens, especially nowadays. It's not the end of the world, but for newly built projects, I would intentionally avoid deprecated packages whenever possible. No need to say this is auth related. Now that we have the whole picture, let's go deeper. What I'm going to do is follow the documentation, write a piece of code to try the SDK out. I've created a console app for that. So the first step is to add a NuGet package to Microsoft.Graph. Since Microsoft.Graph, the auth is deprecated, we're going to add in Azure.Identity instead. The second step is to create a client. The interface of I public client application, the class of device code provider, so on and so forth, those are deprecated. And we're going to follow the newer instructions for Azure.Identity. The code requires a client ID. If you do not know where to get it or what it's that used for, please review the last video. Move on. Next, we'll choose an authentication provider. Basically, when the resource is needed, for example, OneDrive, this will decide what will be used to authenticate the resource owner. Will it pop up a sign-in page in browser? Or will it be a authentication code, for example, in scenarios where the user do not have a browser on the system? This will also decide what types of account is supported, that organizational account or personal account. For our app, since it's a desktop application, interactive provider seems to make most sense at this moment. So I'm going to follow the documentation to update uh, the parameters for interactive browser credential options, including tenant ID, read directory URL, and the authority host. And then I'm going to output the display name for the current user. Now let's run the code. At the very beginning, my application codename K wants to display the name of the current user. So the resource provider, Graph in this case, need to understand who is the current user. So it serves the sign-in dialog for the current user to sign in. Pretending I am codename K test user at outlook.com, I'm going to input my credential here. Now I'm asked to consent so that the application codename K could access my profile. 
After I said yes, Microsoft Graph says, OK, we'll let the application know. Thus, the application gets a code which can be used to exchange for the token, and then use that token to get the user's display name and display it on the display. Now that we have a useful graph client, we're going to see how to use it with the OneDrive aka files. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep coding, keep improving. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.